Christmas morning, day 29. Tabitha shielded her eyes and looked up. All around her, women screamed and men drew their swords. The light spread out until it seemed to cover the entire sky, and everyone fell to the ground, everyone except Tabitha and Jotham. Then a voice, loud and deep, came booming from above. Do not be afraid, the voice said. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. At these words, the screaming in the valley died down. Some dared to take a peek through their fingers, and the men began to lower their swords. Every eye and ear watched and listened as they gazed at the glowing form above them, no longer needing to shield their eyes. The form was that of a dark-skinned man with long flowing hair. He was dressed in white robes with blue and purple sashes. He hovered in the air, light shining from his very being. He held a trumpet in his right hand and a golden scepter in his left. Today in the town of David, the angel continued. A Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly from from nowhere there there appeared thousands of angels, some near, some far. They covered the sky for as far as Tabitha could see and lit up the world with their glow. And every single one of them seemed to be looking directly at her. As they appeared, the angels began to sing, Glory to God, they sang. And it was the most beautiful sound Tabitha had ever heard. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. Over and over, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest. So holy was the sight that Tabitha might have been afraid, except that she saw her friend Jotham standing there, arms outstretched and eyes closed, turning his face to the sky as if to catch the light of the sun. And then quite suddenly, it was quiet. People began to stand, and then they began to talk in whispers at first, whispers that asked, Did you see that? And what could what could that have been? Some were already saying it was a trick or a hallucination, but Tabitha knew better. A moment later, realization struck her. I was there, Tabitha shouted. Her father spun around from where he'd been talking with another man. You were where, he asked. I was right there in the stable, she said. You will find a baby wrapped in claws, lying in a manger, she quoted the angel. That's what he said. And I was there. At the stable, Eliakim was completely confused. Tabitha pulled on his hand and said, Come on, come where? The shepherd asked, even while obeying. Tabitha, what is going on? Tabitha's mother hurried up beside her husband and talked to him as if he were the only one who didn't understand. Which he was. She was in the place where the babe was born, she explained to her husband. Baby? What baby? Tabitha just shook her head and wondered why boys were so dumb, but didn't say anything. She led her parents and all their family up the path into town and saw that Jotham and his family were ahead of them with Jotham in the lead. Maybe not all boys are dumb, Tabitha decided. Somehow she could see Jotham knew exactly where to go and led his parents down the little dirt ramp into the stable below the inn. Tabitha followed a moment later and saw that the woman had given birth to a boy, just as the angel had said. Jotham was holding the baby now, showing the child to his parents. There was a commotion behind them, and then through the door, Tabitha saw a face she did not expect to see. Bartholomew, her friend from Qumran. Qumran was followed by a man and woman, and Tabitha realized he must have found his parents. How wonderful, Tabitha thought. This child must truly be the Messiah if his very birth brings together three children separated from their families. By now, Bartholomew was holding the baby and introducing the child to his own parents, explaining that he, Jotham, and Jesus were all from the line of David. Then Bartholomew looked up and saw her. Tabitha, he cried, and everyone looked. Jotham and Bartholomew walked up to their friend, and many introductions were made. Then Bartholomew asked, Would you like to hold the baby? Tabitha's heart soared at the thought, and she almost said, Of course I want to hold him. I'm a girl, and I can do it better than you. But then she stopped herself, lowered her head, and said to Bartholomew and Jotham, You and Jotham should hold him. Both of you are his family, and I am but a simple shepherd girl. Girl. Jotham and Bartholomew looked at each other and laughed. 
What are you talking about? Jotham said to Tabitha. Girls are just as good as boys. Yes, Bartholomew agreed. Have you not proven that many times? Now here, take him. And with that, Bartholomew placed the newborn babe in Tabitha's arms. Tabitha pulled the infant up close to her face. She smelled his newborn smell and touched the soft skin of his arms. The baby's eyes opened just a crack, and Tabitha felt as if he were looking right at her. She smiled and whispered in his ear, I will follow you always. Then she turned toward her parents, and with her brothers and uncles and aunts looking on, she said, Father, Mother, I would like you to meet Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God. Glory to God in the highest, and on peace on and peace on earth, for unto you is born this day, and every day that you believe, a Savior who is Christ the Lord.